so now we go on to configuring the system um, several files we need to edit here so first one is etcfs tab and this is where the UUIDs come in use so um, you can see it's got four uh, yeah four basic entries here which I'm going to modify so the CD-ROM one shouldn't need modifying um, the uh, other three will need modifying so I'm going to get rid of this UUID because it's obviously going to be wrong I'm going to get rid of these because I'm not using labels and I'll put a UU UUID into there and UUID equals there so I need to find out what the UUIDs are of these three partitions and if you remember I took a a copy of those so if I save that now the first one I need is the boot partition so I'll go back to my root oh was it outside the live CD was it okay let's come out of this um, yes. yeah, it was so if I just cap that go back into the truth just rerun the commands I need to run before okay now if I do no no so the first one's a boot so I need to copy this and I put that number just after this and save it. Can I take that out? Yeah. And the next one I need is the root file system, which is the next one. And paste that in. And lastly, the swap. So that already had the UUID in front of it. Yep. So save that and that's the FS tab completed. It tells you how to find out about them if you hadn't located them using the block ID command. If I run that, And you can see it's identified all the file systems and there's the IDs. You can see 2DC0A8 is that one there. 72B5 is the swap, partition 2, and partition 3 FB200. Or you can just use the traditional um, SDA 1, 2, and 3, but like I say, if you're having disks, um, maybe moving disks around or inserting disks. For example, this one, I normally have another disk in for the Windows XP. Um, I've just deleted, oh, not deleted, sorry. I've disconnected it just so that it wouldn't interfere with this demonstration. Uh, just make it a bit more complicated than it needed to be if I'd left it in. Uh, the next thing I need to do is to modify the host name. So just change this to something suitable. I'll call it AMD 2400X2. Then I need to edit the network file. And we can copy this all in here. And the domain I've got, as you've seen, is mynet.org. Just something I've configured with my um, name server. You may want to leave that. Um, 
Oh, this is for NIS in this domain, so I don't use that. So I'll skip that. Now the next bit is for configuring the network. So yeah, like it says, we've configured it for the installation CD, but we need to install it for or configure it for Gen 2. Um, and more more complex networking, such as bonding, bridging, etc., are in the Gen 2 network configuration. So if you might remember that's the last section of the handbook. Um, so it says first install net IFRC. So let's grab that and put a minus V in there. Would you like to add it? So this is all this, this is what this no replace option does. It just adds it to the world favorites file. Obviously it already exists in the system. Um, so it says if you want to install DHCP, it's described later on. So I'd use static addressing. So I'm just going to edit this file again and add this information down here and put in some suitable information. I need to find out the name of the network adapter. If you use ETH0 and you've got multiple adapters, you can, you'll find it change and, and it will do between boots. So I'm going to do IPA to find out the real name of the network adapter, which is this one here. MP2S5F0, you can see there's the IP address that's been assigned to it. And there's the other adapter that's on the same card with the F1. So that's the first thing I'm going to change. Just change that ETH0 for the actual real UDEV address. And the other thing I need to do is to change the network ID, which I think for this machine, let me just check, I think it's 48. and the broadcast and net mask are correct and the network gateway is correct as well so I'll save that and that's the network configuration done uh, if you're using DHCP it says to set it to DHCP and there's probably more configuration to do as well so to automatically start networking at boot we need to change into the init D directory and you'll see in there that there's a, a net.lo and all we do is we copy this to the uh, well append the adapter name so I need to find the adapter name again do a sim link from the net.lo to net. Dot and the name of the interface and then we add that script to the default run level. And if I list RC update, you'll see that it lists all the scripts that run at various times, various um, times during uh, startup or shutdown. So I've just added the network interface one, and you can see it runs at the default where we specified. So next, we've got the hosts file to edit. And also I don't use IPv6, so I'm going to get rid of that. Just put a hash in front of it. And then I'll just modify this as it's got on the screen there by adding the full, fully qualified don uh, domain name. So AMD 2400 X2 together with the domain it's on, mynet.org and an alias for that is also AMD 2400X2 and also localhost. So this machine which resolves to this local IP address 
It's got a fully qualified domain name. It's got the host name and it's also can be referred to by a local host from this machine. So I'll save that. I haven't got PCMCIA working, so I don't need that. I'll change the password. Um, looks like it's going to have to be a fairly complex one again. So I'll use the same password as I used before. And that's worked. Um, there's some things here about the RC comp for the system V. Um, really don't need to change anything here, but there are some settings you can change and lots of comments to read through. So like I said, I'm not going to change anything in there. Key maps file to select a key map. For me, all I need to do is change the US keyboard to a United Kingdom keyboard. Don't need to touch anything else. Um, you can read the comments and decide whether you need to change anything. So save that. Hardware clock. So this has got some information about the hardware clock. If this machine is only running Linux, leave it at UTC, don't change it. Because I'll be dual booting with Windows XP, I'm going to change that to local as it suggests to avoid any clashes. And there's some other options there you might need to change, but I don't need to change them. Um, now we move on to installing tools. So there's a system logger here. There's three system loggers. Um, they suggest installing sysklogd. So let's emerge that. I'll put the minus V in again just so we can see any extra options, any flags, I use flags. But yeah, you can set any other of these other loggers if you've got a preference. So I'll just wait for that to build. Okay, that's done. And it says it's added to the default uh, run level. So do that. We can probably start it as well. Okay, so it's already been started maybe by the um, package. Uh, this tip here says to install log rotate as well. If we if you use syslogd or syslogng. So let's install that as well. Again, I'll put the V in. You can see this pulls in a few other uh, packages, including Crony, which is a cron um, package.
So that's finished compiling and just a few messages to read here. It tells you how to configure it, gives you some hints. So it's actually in the page here, gives you some more information about what you need to do. It suggests that log rotation is made daily to um, cope with large logs. So it says to comment out the weekly and change it to daily and we can even change this comment and then some logs pro produced by Portage which is the package manager and it says that the um, first line of configuration file should hold the path where logs are stored by portage. So let's edit that. And paste that in and save it. And that should be it for the configuration. So cron daemon, as you've seen, it's already been emerged. If it merges again, it will just rebuild it again, which is a bit pointless. So what we can do is do the no replace. And it should just, uh, is it one word? It should just add it to the world file. Because what we don't want is for some reason, syskalogd um, not relying on crony anymore. Maybe the package maintainers decided another Crontab package is better. The dependency disappears. We update the system and then Crony disappears all of a sudden when we're still using it. So that's why in this case it's advisable to add the package to the world, world set. So we can assume it's been updated or installed rather. We can update the startup so that it's starts when we boot and shuts down and it says you need to run this command if you're running dcron or fcron but we're doing crony so it doesn't matter for indexing we can install mlocate so it's just a file on its own uh, sorry, package on its own. Okay, so it's installed, and the messages here says about um, the fact that the database gets updated daily by cron job, but as it's first time, you can run update DB manually now, and there's a configuration file. Let's have a quick look at that. 
And you can see there's a few options there. So there's some files that are not added, some paths which are not added, some folder names and bind mounts not added to the database by default. So that's, oops, that's quite a good start. So I'll just run update DB. This shouldn't take too long, maybe a couple of minutes. Let's just see. Right, so that's done, that wasn't too bad. Yeah, it took 40 seconds. So we've now got data. So in theory, we can do locate, for example, GCC, look for the compiler, and there's loads of things there that have got GCC in. So that's worked fine. Uh, remote access, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's add that. It's already installed SSH, obviously, because we're using it. Uh, although, sorry, that's the host, isn't it? But it's obviously all, all already part of the system set. So all we've done is just added it to the um, default run level. It's a bit better there about serial consoles if you're using them. Um, file system tools, as it says there, if you're using any of the EXT file systems, then the appropriate tools package is already part of the system set so there's no need to add that in if you're using any of these other file systems you'll need to um, emerge these and make sure they're part of the um, world set and there's an article about file systems there if you need the DHCP client there's some more information there or a PPOE, PPPOE client and wireless tools there's some links there but um, I don't need any of them.